Hey everybody, what up? Alright, so in this video, I'm going to be doing something that's sort of a rehash of uh, what I do every year. I talk about the best languages to learn and um, it, the opinion, I feel like it always stokes my interest as a programmer. Like, what is going on with programming these days? Like, where would I spend my time if I were a brand new programmer just joining the field? And um, the one caveat here is that there is no best language to learn. So if you're doing web development, like, you're not going to be doing Python, right? Like, well, you could be for server side, but if you needed to build like web components and a user interface for a website, you don't use Python for that. Now I know that there's like Python projects that run in the browser, but languages are like tools. So you use the best tool for the job. And then typically whatever sort of project you're working on, whether it's a mobile app, a game, a website, um, database stuff, like there's always going to be like probably a range of technologies that you're going to use. So, I've always said build projects, but this is this video is going to be just simply about the languages themselves and like sort of what I recommend. Um, now, I'm going to start from like 10 counting down. So number 10, I would say is like assembly language. And this is something I actually don't know, but I've always wanted to sort of learn it. And this is like much closer to the ones and zeros of programming. So uh, programming, there's like this phrase that I've heard. It's like, it's all if else is all the way down basically ones and zeros you know one is true zero is false so it's it's true or false all the way down uh, to its core right but as you build upon those ones and zeros we have things like assembly language which is much closer to the hardware than a language like python so assembly is something that um, a lot of like satellites or at least i think you know i'm not even in this field so i'm sort of a uh, spitballing here but you assembly language would be good for things like you know even like dvd players and such like maybe uh that's probably not a good example either really it's where you need to have the utmost speed so if you're building some sort of new piece of hardware robotics something like that you're going to be using assembly language for that uh and maybe not always like but the the larger the language it needs an operating system, it needs a kernel, it needs all this stuff, but the assembly language, like if you wanted to write code that's gonna like directly wire into your hardware, like a graphics processor, or I would say even if you figured out some way to like reverse hash uh, RSA 256, which is like the encryption method for Bitcoin, it's gonna be something like assembly language, maybe even something lower than that, which you don't really get too much lower than that, but. If anybody's going to be able to pull something like that off, it's going to be really low, closer to the metal, so like assembly language. This will give you a real big appreciation for languages that were built on top of it. Um, so that is my number 10. Number 9, I would say, is C. So C is the godfather of all programming languages. It was built in the early 1970s uh, by Dennis Ritchie and Brian Kernighan, or Brian, yeah, uh, either way. Uh, Dennis Ritchie is considered to be like, yeah, he's listed right here. Uh, so he was at Bell Labs and a lot of people that may not be familiar, but Bell Labs uh, was AT&T before they got broken up with a monopoly in the 80s. Uh, but a lot of, uh, of our core programming technologies came from uh, research institutions that had to do with a phone company of all, of all things. Um, and like, for instance, like uh, Steve Jobs with the graphical user interface that eventually became the, the Macintosh. Uh, he was inspired by another one of those like incubator startups on the West Coast. And that company was Xerox, so a printing company. Uh, but they, they pretty much are the, the godfathers of graphical user interfaces that we've become so familiar with over the years. C is going to be a uh, lower level language. Now, some people will say it's a high level language when you compare it to assembly were ones and zeros, but it is lower compared to every other language on this list. Uh, so that would be my number nine. Uh, number eight would be Rust. Rust is created by the people over at Mozilla, which are responsible for the Firefox web browser. Uh, they're also responsible for a lot of the web standards that we have. So a lot of the web standards like W3C and all that, they're consulting with some of the largest companies in the industry like Mozilla, Google, Microsoft, Adobe, all those people come together, but uh, Mozilla has always been sort of a pioneer in uh, the programming field for, for quite some time now. But Rust is like their new flagship language. It is very fast. It's uh, immutable by default, although you can use immutable. Uh, you can, uh, and that just means that you can mutate things after they're declared, uh, change them uh, after they're declared. 
Uh, but anyway, um, Rust, the, the downside of Rust, I would say, is that it's a rather hard language to learn. But it's still easier than writing something like C or C++. Number seven is going to go to C++, in my opinion, because it's still really the godfather language for all video game development. So if you look at something like Unity Engine, even though you can use uh, uh, C Sharp and, uh, and JavaScript even for Unity, but please don't, nobody does. And then it makes me confused when I have to like try to look up documentation. Can't ever understand what the hell is going on in Unity in the first place. And it especially makes it worse when you start writing stuff in JavaScript. Um, but yeah, so C++ though, physics engines for instance, Grand Theft Auto costs $300 million to make Grand Theft Auto 5 has probably a thousand or plus more people that spent years working on that project. Um, yeah, so $300 million, but like who makes the physics engine? They use something called the bullet physics engine. That's written in things like C++. C++ does not do garbage collection, AKA like memory management for you. So that will give you a, a, an appreciation for all the other languages on this list that do do garbage collection and memory management for you. All right, number six, I guess we're on six. Yeah, we're on six. Uh, I would say PHP. Now this is literally one of the most hated languages out there, but it's um, it's got a foothold in, the in, a foothold in the industry and it's gonna continue to have it. And I still think that for a lot of e-commerce websites out there, if you wanted to just set up some sort of shared host, have an e-commerce website like OpenCart or I guess there's Magenta and a bunch of other crap. Uh, but a lot of that stuff, you know, PHP just works right out of the box. For me, I hate PHP. So having to go in and edit that code, I can figure it out, but I'd rather not. Um, so I avoid it myself, but people that are good with it, I mean, it gets the job done. Uh, number five, I'm going to give to Java. Java is an object oriented language. It was created by Sun Microsystems, which got bought out by Oracle in the late nineties. They sort of brought object oriented programming to the forefront. At the time, we had languages like Python, which was being used by Google in the mid 90s, but nobody was really using it. Um, companies like Amazon, they were using Perl at the time. So Perl is a language that's not on this list, but it was my first language actually. And I, um, yeah, there's always gonna be some nostalgia there. I also think Perl as a language, and I know I'm jumping between Java and Perl here, but when I talk about Perl, I do think they have the best logo of all the languages. I just love the camel for some reason, which goes back to the O'Reilly books that always have some sort of animal on the front of it. Um, but when you wrote Perl, you always had to have that camel book around because Perl is considered a write only language. And once you write it, not even you can figure out what the hell you wrote like six months later. Um, so that was the problem with Perl. But you know, that language was dominating in the, in the late nineties and early two thousands because it was much better than writing C++. So a lot of websites were using it and they were using something called CGI scripts, which is very similar to PHP. PHP was also written in the, um, the image of Perl. So that's where PHP gets its sigils and things for variables and arrays and hash arrays and all that. That all comes from Perl. Uh, but PHP basically did Perl for the web better than what Perl was doing. Now Java came along though, and they basically said, hey, we're gonna create this slow runtime Java virtual machine. You install that and you're gonna be able to run Java anywhere. And we all know that that's not the case, uh, but that was the promise. It was slow as hell out of the gate, uh, slow for developers, but ultimately you could end up uh, using a lot of tools and the IDEs and all that got better to help you write it. So um, why do I have Java on here? It's like Java is still humongously used around the industry. There's tons of jobs in it. I also hate Java personally. I just don't like it. I have enough experience elsewhere where I just, you'd have to pay me a lot of money for me to jump ship doing what I do to jump over to Java. Um, but it is uh, for people that have been in the game for a long time, you know, Java can do a lot of things. And the biggest thing that I think that Java can do is Android development. So when it comes to mobile apps, we have things like Flutter and React Native and all that to help you write your mobile applications. But if you look at most, mobile apps, like at least the most popular ones, they're mostly writing native uh, Java, right? So it's Java, Android, SDK. Um, so I, I really feel like, you know, as much as, you know, Flutter makes things easier and all that, you look at all the apps, they're pretty much being written if they're Android and Java. 
Um, all right, so number four is going to go to Go. And I have Go ahead of Rust because they both came out around the same time. Go is Google's language, so it's their, their flagship language. They created it. Uh, one of the creators that helped with Go, along with Rob Pike and a few others, uh, that was Brian Kernigan, and I think it's, it's his name. I hope I'm not saying it wrong, but I'm not going to edit this. Um, anyway, he, um, he helped Dennis Ritchie. So he was actually the creator of a language called the B language. And then the B language came before C, but he helped Dennis Ritchie write C. Um, and C, uh, you know, just going back to that, like Dennis Ritchie once said, he's like, um, it's not a hard language to learn, but it takes a genius to use it or something along those lines. Uh, and that's sort of right, because again, with C, it's like you have to manage your own memory and all that. And C++ came along and brought object-oriented programming to the C language. Um, anyway, so Go, though, that is a, a language that is a lot easier, in my opinion, than Rust. And it's, uh, it's almost as fast, probably not as fast. In fact, it's definitely not as fast, but um, it is very, very popular now with web development. And uh, it seems to be gaining more and more traction. A lot of companies down here are using it. Some of this is deceiving. It's not like any one of these companies is like, oh, we're using Go for everything. Go in the browser, Go on the servers, everything. No, these companies just use Go here and there. Like Netflix, for instance, um, their front end is built in React. And, um, and like Google, they're using all kinds of different stuff. Capital One, I actually interviewed with them one time. Uh, they're using React as well. So it's like, they, and they don't even use Go at the time on the server side. They're using .NET. So anyway, at least I think they were. They were .NET or Java, one of the two. I don't. I think it was .NET because I was a .NET developer at the time. Um, all right. So just yeah, don't you know? Take this with a grain of salt because these companies are also using a lot of other technologies as well. And uh, in fact, yeah, I mean Google definitely uses Python for YouTube and all that. So all that's deceiving. Um, all right, so number three is going to go to C-sharp. So this is Microsoft's language. This was Microsoft ad uh, responding to Java in the uh, late 90s. So .NET came out in like 2000 or 2001. Out of the gate again, like it was awful uh, because like it was mostly being used for like ASP.NET for web development. Uh, there was a lot of web form development too in there. So anyway, um, like... I think the, the, when it first came out, it was awful because it was using something called web forms. So if you ever want to have a hard time writing web applications, um, check out web forms. It's not really around anymore. Although there is some legacy code still using web forms. And uh, again, that is just a, just an awful framework. Um, all right. So number two is going to go to Python. And Python has been around since uh, 1990, cr created by Guido Van Rossum who is Dutch and he came over to the United States. He actually got his first job in the United States right down the street from where I live in Reston, Virginia, which is the, um, it's near the data capital of the, the world. More data transfers through Northern Virginia uh, than any other location. I think 70% of all the data for all the internet uh, goes through Northern Virginia. So I have, I've always wanted to like feature it on a video, but there, there are certain places in Loudoun County uh, and some in Fairfax County where it's like just and mostly Loudoun County, but just endless, like miles upon miles of these humongous buildings that are all like bomb proof, don't have windows and uh, don't even have like signs really to say what, you know, what companies are there. But basically every company is there from Facebook, Google, all that stuff. And they're storing a ton of data, probably, you know, obviously the NSA as, as well. Um, so that said, uh, yeah, that was Guido Van Ross. I'm working in Reston. And then, so Python, right, it's been around for a long time. It's rather slow when you compare it to something like Rust or C Sharp or even Java. It's a dynamically interpreted duck type language, which means that um, it gives you a lot of freedom in the way that you type, but it also is um, very opinionated when it comes to indent indentation and white space. So it makes you have white space. That's one of the biggest things that people complain about with Python for some reason. Um, although once you get used to it, it makes your code a lot easier to read. This is probably the easiest, um, most versatile first language that I would recommend for any programmer. My first language was Perl. I then moved to Python. And then from there, just a bunch of other stuff. But um, I still use Python to this day, even though I've never been paid to use it. The Django web framework is one of my favorite, just for nostalgia reasons. My website, CodeHawk, which uh, you guys should check out if you're trying to learn to code. I'm going to be adding more stuff there. I've taken time off and, and you know, granted I accept, you know, I accept that I did or, you know, I admit that. 
Uh, but there's going to be some some hell of t uh, tutorials coming to Code Hawk in the next probably six months or so. Uh, I feel like I got a lot to say, a lot of lot to teach, a lot that I've learned over the last like year basically. Um, and really, the motivation levels are coming back, so that's like the biggest thing. And uh, anyway, I use Python for things like concatenating my videos, for web scraping, for uploading my uh, videos for the websites or CodeHawk. That's all self contained and hosted on my own virtual private server and um, you know doing things like uh, even maintaining my local testing files and stuff like that I'm using Python for that um, all right but Python's uh, big in artificial intelligence number one ranked on the TLB index and by far probably under most um, surveys and things the most popular language out there all right and then number one I'm gonna say TypeScript so this could also be considered JavaScript as well because TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. It, it gets compiled to JavaScript. So anything you write in TypeScript, you're targeting JavaScript and it's going to turn this TypeScript code into a JavaScript file that runs inside the web browser. So again, you could substitute this with JavaScript, but they're basically um, not really one and the same, but the, the thing is, is most big projects for any sort of front end uh, and now even back-end code and Node.js supports TypeScript, so a lot of server-side code in the Node.js runtime is written in TypeScript. Um, so I think, you know, by far and away, this is the most popular, the most uh, important language of all these languages when it uh, comes to the year of 2022. And, uh, and it also just shows you how awful the TOB index is when it comes to ranking languages because... I think it has top script, or TypeScript barely in the top 50. And there's no reason, like if you really look at it, type, TypeScript's probably number one or it should be. So you should always take those lists with a grain of salt, even my own. But I do feel like the TOB index is like this completely outdated model for ranking uh, best languages. All right, so that's going to be my list. So again, uh, if you're learning the code, check out my website, codehawk.com. trying to type it, but I'm misspelling here. But anyway, uh, codehawk one price for everything you log in i'm gonna have a lot more courses but once you register you log in and you pay for it you can go to any one of these courses it's like any other format it'll keep track of anything that you watched and all that stuff so uh check it out codehawk.com all right everybody take care have a good day and bye